Chapters 1? Yes. Ah. You say, it seems that you've seen a lot of animals in that Amazon. Amazon, yeah. I mean, how was that trip on the boat? I mean, was too weird? You took a boat, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we to... took a boat. It seems like you and the whole group like adventures. Yeah, yeah. We like to go out and like when we're, when we're in a city mm -hmm. and see things and do things. The because weirdest... when you're on tour, uh, people really encourage you, like, you have your management and, and the people that you tour with really, just the whole situation mm -hmm. encourages, uh, like, some kind of sheltering. I mean, you go yeah. into a hotel and uh, it kind of makes you think room service, uh, wake-up calls, you know, you get into this whole framework of, of uh, like, being in a cage. Sure. It encourages you not to go out, so we like to we like to go against that. But I mean, do you always look for a thrill, or is that a part of? Yeah, it comes out of boredom, I think. I mean, when you're touring, uh, like I said, you know. Yeah, but you're supposed to sleep and play yeah. and wait, and so we like to go against that. We like to go look for things, things to do. So, talking about this period before the band, you you are you are like a late comer for, for Faith No More. How much do you think that the sound of the band changed with you? Uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. It was strange for me. I mean, uh, the stuff that I was used to doing, I was used to singing really weird stuff. Mm -hmm. And this, to me, was a little more straightforward. So it was like discipline. I had to train myself. And if you finally, like, made it, I mean, how, how, oh, yeah, how strange well, do you feel singing those songs the first time? It was weird at first, but I was happy just to be in a band mm -hmm. and to go on tour. I'd never been on tour before. Mm. So my attitude was uh, sit in my room for two weeks, write lyrics, and let's go on tour. You didn't really change the, 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 the sounds of, the, of Faith No More. I'm sure I did, yeah. But uh, since the beginning? Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I think that, I mean, basically the main difference is the voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, people yeah. might say that the music is more commercial. I don't know. Maybe my voice is more commercial than the other guys. I don't know. When you take, you know, my voice in Mr. Bungle or whatever, mm -hmm. I do what has to be done to make the music stick out, mm -hmm. I think. That's what I try and do. But uh, with Faith No More, there's like a certain framework that I have okay. to fit my voice into, and, and that's what happens. And how did it, did it happen? I mean, the, the band tried to teach you something, or...? Not you, really, no. You were trying to adapt yourself to the situation. Kind of. Yeah. It was a little uncomfortable at first, and they just... Let me stay in my room. <laughs> and did they, did they make, like, changes on the lyrics you wrote the first time? Not really. We took out a fude here and there. Mm. <laughs> some some fude here, some fude there. Fude, fude. Uh, yeah. Like, now we put those beeps, okay? Like, yeah. Beep! Yeah. <laughs> Bota pra fude. Yeah. La policia vaya tomar no cu! If uh, you make a mental, uh, like a visual image, mm. that's the way I do it a lot, with Faith No More and Mr. Bungle. I think, uh, okay, this song looks like uh, a big fat guy walking down the street, uh, drinking Guarana. Uh, then he kicks a dog in the face, and, uh, and then he vomits onto an old lady laying on the sidewalk. I mean, you think of things like that, and then you write a song. In the songs in Mr. Bungle album, and also sometimes in with Faith No More, it seems that both bands have, have a position that, yes, we hate any kind of dance music which is totally infesting the charts now. That's not, that's not true. Ladies with an attitude, let's get in the mood. Don't you stand there, let's get to it. Strike the pose, there's nothing to it. Boom. Some, some things I think you have to like uh, for uh, wrong reasons. Mm. Well, like Vanilla Ice. Yeah. You don't like him because he's good, you like him because he's horrible. Okay, Understand? you do just the opposite. Yes. I mean, it's a lot, it's yeah. hate and love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Things like that. New kids, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, looking at a, uh, it's like reading Opovo, yeah. or Akia Gora. Yeah. It's uh, it's a fascination. It's like blood and guts, sangue. But the thing is, there seems to be a fight between dance and rock in the in the charts right now. I'm trying to think of Billboard now, and you have, okay, dance is it's like in fast in the charts, and rock is losing its space. I mean, I wouldn't say like. Okay, That's fine with me, man. I hope rock dies. Really? I don't, I'm not sticking up. I don't think anybody in Faith No More is sticking up for rock. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're about. So you, you go, you go, you go. To me, rock and roll is dead long ago. Yeah, I've never liked it. That's the thing. They're trying to say, no, rock is not dead, and let's promote it, and which is totally... No, it's dead. 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 Everyone, it's dead. Let it go. 
I feel so for my, but I and if you learn about sex through magazines, mm -hmm. sex becomes very impersonal and uh, automated. Mm -hmm. but if you, if you, what is the best way to learn about it? Well, uh, doing it. Exactly. Experimenting. Finding other ways. How did you find out? Well, you were the interviewer here. But anyway. <laughs> uh, no, I want to know. Okay, it's off the camera then. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think but they want to know too. Well, they know already. I'll no, they the don't. Time. Yeah, one of the things with you, I think I mentioned this. Come on, man. Dang it. I'm uh, here pouring out my soul, man. Listen, uh, for you to, 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 <laughs> uh, to get in touch with a thing, was, it came late for you, maybe. Timmy, though? No, me? <laughs> oh, really? Are you? He's <laughs> trying to. Ele es timido. He's trying to get out of the subject. <laughs> That's your whole thing. When Yo it, fala uh, de sexo. No, I just ask about sex, that's it. <laughs> Somebody put me to oh. Talking about open mind, you've been here in a kind of different shows. I mean, you, you've been to places where you, you would see live nude shows. And yeah, you, you have to see places like that. You sure. have to go to favelas, and then you have to see uh, a nice restaurant, or mm -hmm. Cocovado, or something like sure. this. But it, specifically about these shows, it, we, I mean, you would never th see a show like this in, in the US, United States, maybe, would you? Uh, uh, the, it's, it's more of an act. It's, uh, it's forbidden in America mm -hmm. to show mm -hmm. penetration. Oh, and you know? uh -huh. So it's an act. They act. They don't really do it. Here, it's sexo explicito. Exactly. I mean, and w do you think that this, have, this have, has a kind of... Uh, influence on the way people behave here? I don't know how much I you think, know. I uh, think, well, sex in America, uh, we are very uh, repressed. Still? Still, yes, yes. Even people are very afraid of sex, mm -hmm. very afraid. If you were talking about sex with friends, this same situation uh, would happen? Well, there's a period of time where uh, you just start talking about it. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, when I was really young, uh, I used to masturbate in front of everyone. Because I didn't know. My parents didn't tell me it was a bad thing. But, and how was the reaction, if you can remember that? Well, uh, saying, just don't do it. it was like I think my parents kind of got a kick out of it. I think it was like <laughs> entertainment for them. <laughs> we would have friends over. Uh -huh. Like my parents would have friends over. And uh, now might come and do your number. Right? Yeah, well, kind of, yeah. It's like, uh, you know how they say, oh, play the piano for everybody. Yeah, yeah. My parents would say, come on, Mike, show them your dick. <laughs> and you just Mike, heard... Mike, uh, uh, tocar la pinto. Okay, and then you very spontaneously you would just sure just yeah, because I didn't know it was a private thing. There's a day where you realize mm -hmm. this is uh, something I shouldn't be doing in front of people anymore, and uh, so you, I just went into my room and I do it in my room instead. But I would still tell everyone. But this was like a, I'd say, um, okay, I'm going to masturbate. I'll be back in a few minutes. See you in a while. <laughs> See you in uh, 30 seconds. Did it happen really late for you? with like, or no? Sex? Yeah. Uh, with other people? Yeah. Uh, 19, I think. And this, like, because you have all the, your circle of relations, they say, oh, you haven't done it yet, so how come? No, I thought sex was stupid. Really? I, yeah. uh, um, I was very straight. Uh -huh. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke. Uh -huh. uh, I got great grades. Mm -hmm. I really studied a lot. I was really, uh, focused and, and, and well, let's just say dumb. When and I, I vowed uh, to myself, I said, I don't, I don't want to drink, mm -hmm. and I don't want to uh, have sex because uh, I equated that with drinking and being drunk and being stupid. Mm -hmm. So I thought sex was dumb. Do, do, do you think you, you... Slobbering and talking baby talk and... Mm -hmm. do, do you think you used to be like that because of your family? What made you behave like that? Uh, probably, no, I, I think it was more so my friends. Mm -hmm. I had about uh, three or four or five friends mm -hmm. that I was really close with and everyone else I hated. <laughs> and they, they, they had 